amazing facts for you in the proof that Islam is the truth. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to the proof that Islam is the truth. And we're going through some of the amazing scientific statements in the Quran. Things that it was impossible for Prophet Muhammad to have known 1,400 years ago. Now one of the things we want to talk about is the water cycle. Now it may seem very obvious to us today about the water cycle. And for example the origin of underground springs. But the ancient Greeks for example didn't seem to get it right despite all of their philosophy and their knowledge and their ability, they actually theorized that underground springs were a product of spray that came off the sea and collected in caves. And then the spray that came off the sea and collected in the caves dripped down into the underground reservoirs through a great sea called the abyss. Um, in fact, it was not until the 18th century that the water cycle was really accurately described. Yet the Qur'an says 1,400 years ago in the 39th surah in the 21st ayah Have you not seen that Allah sent water down from the sky and led it through sources into the ground? This is a simple but in fact highly accurate description of the water cycle. Another amazing fact that is mentioned in the Qur'an we find in the 24th surah of the Qur'an in the 40th verse. And it's talking about the state of those people who disbelieve and reject faith in God. The Qur'an describes the state of the disbeliever, the person who has rejected faith, like a darkness. A darkness that is so dark, it is like the deep depths of darkness in a vast deep ocean, overwhelmed with wave upon wave, topped by a cloud. If a man stretches out his hand, he can hardly see it. For any to whom Allah gives no light, there is no light. Now, on the surface, here Allah is giving a simple description. A person who does not believe in God, and does not follow the guidance that Allah has sent down, is a person who is in darkness. They are lost. Their life is a confusion. In fact, their life is so confusing, they can hardly see what is in front of them. This is how Allah is describing it. Darkness upon darkness, confusion upon confusion. He can hardly see or understand what is happening. If God does not give a person light, there is no light. So. It is describing a type of absence of light, of being able to see or know really what is truly going on. And so this is the case that is described. So on the surface, we have a very poetic, we have a very, a very strong and vigorous and, and amazing description of this darkness and this state of being lost. Yet when we examine it in more detail, there is something else going on here as well. There is a clue to some scientific truths. First of all, the Quran describes a vast deep ocean and it describes waves upon waves. Now, of course, most of us are familiar with the waves that are on top of the ocean. But what does it mean waves upon waves? Are there other waves in the ocean? Well, we're going to find out. Also the Qur'an talks about a person being deprived of light that they can hardly see. Now a ray of light is composed of seven colors. Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. And light when it hits water goes through what is called refraction. That means that for example in the upper 10 to 15 meters the water absorbs the red color. And as you go deeper, each of the colors in the spectrum become absorbed by the water. Until you get to a depth of below about 1,000 meters, there is complete darkness. Now what is amazing is that we also find in modern scientific discoveries that internal waves cover the deep waters of the seas and oceans 
because the deep waters have a higher density than the waters above them. So waves upon waves. We have the internal waves in the deep, deep ocean, and then we have the waves on top of the ocean. And then the clouds and so on and so forth, they add to the darkness and the disparity and the, the breaking up and the refracting of light. Now what is interesting is the deep darkness, remember the Quran says they stretch out their hand, they can hardly see it. This deep darkness begins below the internal waves in the ocean. In fact, there are certain fish down at those depths which need their own lights in order to be able to see. And amazingly, Allah has created these creatures that can actually generate their own lights. Now this is really amazing because of course, until very recently, no one has been able to penetrate and to reach those deep parts of the ocean. It is only with extremely sophisticated modern machinery and submarines and diving suits that someone has been able to go down to that depth. Yet we have the Quran. 1,400 years ago, describing the internal waves of the oceans and the darkness that is there at the depths of the oceans. How on earth, how in the heavens, could a man living in the desert 1,400 years ago have known about such detailed information about a science like oceanography? Well. Professor Rao, who is an expert in marine biology at the King Abdul Aziz University in Jeddah, says, 1,400 years ago, a normal human being could not explain this phenomenon in so much detail. This information must have been coming from a supernatural source. My dear viewers, this even is not the end of the amazing scientific statements in the Quran. Because the next thing I want to deal with is cosmology. The statements in the Quran concerning the universe. Now, until recently, or we could say up until the 1960s, there was a major controversy between scientists concerning the state of the universe. Now some scientists believed and had begun to develop the idea that the universe was in a state of flux, that the universe was in fact expanding. And from this theory of the expanding universe also came another theory which is commonly known today as the Big Bang Theory. This is the idea that the universe had a common origin in a singularity, a dense, condensed type of matter. The universe was a infinitely small, we could say, part of dense matter. And this infinitely small dense matter then exploded into what is the universe that we know today. Now this was opposed by the static state theory, the static state theory, and this was very much preferred theory of atheists, that the universe was the way it was eternally in the past and will keep on being that way eternally in the future. Uh, and this was a theory that was really largely based, at least initially, and was believed in by Albert Einstein, and many people therefore followed on from that with this idea of the static state theory. And so this idea of the Big Bang Theory, which was you know, really held by Fred Hoyle, he was the person who uh, supported this theory, uh, and Lemaitre who was opposing it with the idea of the Big Bang Theory. Now, evidence came to light that showed that variations in the light spectrum that were being emitted from galaxies and stars, which is called redshift, showed in fact that the universe is expanding. And it's amazing. 
that this scientific fact that has now been confirmed and it is agreed upon by almost unanimously all scientists in the field that we live in an expanding universe and the evidence very very clearly and strongly suggests that what does the Quran say 1400 years ago before there were telescopes and all the means to discover this information the Quran says in the 51st surah in the 47th ayah the heaven we have built it with power and we are expanding it let's just repeat that again the heaven we have built it with power and we are expanding it 1400 years ago the Quran is mentioning how the universe is expanding the next most important observational evidence was the discovery of cosmic microwave background radiation in 1964 by a powerful telescope and this had been predicted in the Big Bang Theory as a relic of the hot ionized plasma of the early universe when it first cooled sufficiently to form neutral hydrogen and allowed space to become transparent to light and its discovery led to the general acceptance among physicists that the Big Bang is the best model for the origin and evolution of the universe what does the Quran say in the 21st surah in the 30th ayah have not those who disbelieved known that the heavens and the earth were joined together as one united piece then we parted them and we have made from water every living thing will they not then believe the common origin of the universe or the singularity that scientists believe today the universe originated from and which led to the Big Bang it is considered that the conditions of this singularity were so precise it is almost inconceivable that it could be in that way except that it has been made by an all-wise and powerful creator these are some of the amazing things that the Quran is telling us about the origin of our universe the Quran also mentions that Allah turned to the heavens when it was Dukhan and the word Dukhan in Arabic means smoke this also accurately describes the hot gaseous mass of the universe before the galaxies and the stars began to be formed so here we have the Quran 1400 years ago talking about the expanding universe talking about the common origin of the universe that the heavens and the earth were one talking about the gaseous state the smoke like state of the early universe this is in a book 1400 years old mentioning facts that scientists have only begun to discover today and we have created from every living thing water it's a fact that every living thing has its basis in and is fundamentally composed of water you and me are about 70 to 80 percent water we are made of about 70 to 80 percent water a fact that has been mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago will you not believe will you now not believe what will it take to make you realize and to understand that the Quran is the truth that Muhammad is the messenger of God this is more evidence the proof that Islam is the truth join us for the next episode when we will be going through some more amazing facts from the Quran until then assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh may the peace and blessings of Allah and his guidance be with all of you